Let's take a look at how close Google gets us to letting the browser do all the browsing for us. We're going to take a look at Project Mariner. I'm kind of going wrong, so I mean, may need to interrupt this. Let's jump in and take over. Yeah, we're trying. We're trying to help. Wow. Well, I would agree with him. We're stuck. <laughs> Non-responsive. Ah, and I broke twice and didn't get my trips made for me. And when I simplified my trip, I didn't quite get the data that I wanted. Uh, so why on earth am I saying this is a good product? It is a good product. Um, okay, as some of you may remember, about a month ago, I signed up for Google Ultra, super excited about VO3, and I got Project Mariner with it. So I thought today, before my Ultra package goes away, am I going to resubscribe? Stay tuned for that. I will be probably putting a video out on that very soon. Um, I am going to take a look at Project Mariner to see where the state of computer use agents really is today. And I thought it would be fun to kind of ask it to do a couple somewhat complicated, at least one of them feels like a reasonably complicated task. So let's just jump right in and take a look at what Project Mariner is and what it can do for us. Okay, Project Mariner is a computer use system. And basically what that means is a system that will move your cursor and mouse and type for you and click on things and research. And this one is not actually using my computer. It's using a hosted computer that it creates on my behalf. So it's kind of a completely sanitized computer that it starts up and then starts controlling. And in fact, Project Mariner only uses a browser today. So it doesn't quite go as far as something like Manus or some of the other computer use systems that have the ability to do real programming, things like that. So really what we're going to do is try to do some research and use the web through a browser and see what an automated browser can really do for us. Okay, I thought I would start with a really, really simple example. This doesn't take much work, but it really does show, I think, or might show what Mariner can do at the very simplest. All right, I'm going to ask it about movies near me tonight. Here it goes and it kicks off. And what it's really doing is it's preparing a virtual machine here. So it's going into the cloud somewhere and starting up a machine. This is one of these asynchronous systems that's done all in the cloud. So really, you'd be able to use a, a web device on a phone or here in Project Mariner on, on your computer. Once it's got started like this, you would be able to just close it, come back when it's done, it'll send you a notification. You can see that it looked for movies tonight in Nevada, California, which is great. So it's certainly showing me that. I'm expanding the entire list. That's good. Task complete. All right. So it's saying, congratulations. Here's what you've got. And I'll say, all right, one of the things about this computer here is I can click this button to take it over. And you'll see in that case, I can kind of move around a little bit, scrolling, clicking on things. So it really is a full browser and a computer down there that I can use. But this gets me to this question. I can come back and say, it seems like it had already given me a list that I didn't show. So that's great. So what I'm really asking for is, can I continue the task now that it's got this far? Will it go back and go a little bit further? And it certainly does. So it says Mission Impossible is here and F1 is releasing tonight, as I understand it. So awesome news. So flying colors really flew right through this. But this is the very simple example of can it bring up a browser, basically do one search. It did save me a bit of time if it knew this about me and I was in chat GPT. But OK, this is the lightest weight version of something like this. Let's give it something a little bit more difficult. OK, let's get just a little bit tougher. All right, I am searching for a cake cup coffee maker. So I don't really care what brand it comes from, but I want a good one. It's got to have a pretty big water reservoir. That's important to me. Um, it would be nice if I could schedule it to come on in the morning, but that's not terribly important. Uh, and I'd like it to be kind of attractive and I don't want too pricey, nothing over $120. That seems incredible for a simple coffee maker like this. Can you do some shopping around and find the best one? I'd also like to see basically the best one you know of. So give me that one also, and then give me a list of the ones that I might like in a reasonable price point. All right, let's see what it can do with that. Of course, where does it start? Jumps out to Google, looks for best K-cup coffee makers, probably where I would have started. And it dives into a couple of the results to take a look at them. I think it's going in probably to gather some information. One of the things Project Mariner here can do is it's not just a go find information on the web agent. It is a research system as well. And they are intending on this becoming native to the Gemini service in some way. At least that's what they've mentioned. So it's 
the idea of deep research or extended research that it may be able to take actions for you. And where that really becomes useful is when it's using your information or your logins, private accounts for you, or doing things on your behalf. And we'll see that in a second as well as we ask it to do something that's a little bit more private to me. But in this case, it's got to go to all of these different websites, look through them, scroll around, research what's on each one of them, remember it. So it's got a set of memory that it's keeping all of this information in, and then doing the actual work. So this one, unlike other computer use agents, is actually doing the plan itself. Rather than me telling it a step, a list of steps of things it should do, it's intended that you would just give it a broad kind of request like we are here, and it will go and perform the duties as it sees fit. It will ask questions from time to time. I don't think we'll see it in this one because we're not asking it to do much that's special. It's just web research. Let's let this thing learn a little bit about coffee makers. All right, another thing that's maybe worth describing about Mariner is it is pretty slow. Now, if it's reading the entire page or gathering all the information off the entire page, I'll say it's not incredibly slow. It's going faster than I would if I was expecting myself to read the whole thing. But it doesn't exactly glance and cruise the way you would when you look at products on the web. You might be able to very quickly throw a few away. So it's a lot slower than you might do it yourself if you had a thought of, I want to coffee maker, let me go quickly glance through five of them. But that's not really the point, of course. The point is, it can do this. You can be on the bus and go, yeah, find me a good coffee maker. Done. Let it do what it's doing. By the time you get home, you've got a nice list of options. Okay, and this one's interesting. It tells me task complete. It identified top-rated K-cup coffee makers, located and evalu evaluated the brew and chill by Keurig. Um, 70 ounce reservoir, analyzed Ninja Pod and grounds a uh, single serve, best K-cup machine under 120 with 56 ounce reservoir, but it recommended the K-cup brew and chill coffee makers, best overall K-cup machine, and the Ninja Pod ground specialty single serve coffee maker as the best budget friendly option. But interestingly, I think it did some of that in this tab back here in the back, but I guess I would say this is kind of a failure because it's $199, which is well beyond what we asked for. So, okay, I see where you're going, but yeah, I don't think that you passed on this one. You did research, but you really didn't stay on task very well. All right, I don't know if this bodes well for the more complicated. Let's go see. Okay, so let's talk about this big one here. It's a ski weekend bundle. So we're looking for three different packages budget, mid-range, and luxury. First, I wanted to take its research, find the best possible packages at the low, medium, and high pricing, basically, for a two-day ski trip, and then put those into a Google Doc, so we theoretically will have three different pages, then find the data on those and put it into a Google Sheet and see if it can create three different sheets so that we will have a low, medium, and high sheet so that we can take a look at them. So the real challenge here is, can it control the different tools that Google itself has? If I was doing this research, I might want to create documentation out of it and not just have a whole bunch of various links. So that's this first question is using Google Docs, can we do that? All right, let's give that a shot. And we certainly would expect that this is gonna take quite some time to get started. But I will tell you the one trick that I have learned that makes this a lot easier. And I, once it comes up, I will take over and pause it to give it the best possible chance of success. And that comes down to the fact that, oh, it started the Google Doc right away, which is just fascinating. So maybe I'll leave it alone for a bit. The problem has been that it needs me to log in generally. So it'll stop and ask me to log in. And sometimes that fails and doesn't quite work. So what I've done is I've created separate tabs and logged into the different applications in different tabs. You can see it's already kind of going wrong. So I mean, may need to interrupt this. Let's jump in and take over and get rid of the print dialog. Yeah, we're trying. We're trying to help about a new tab. Wow. Well, I would agree with him. We're stuck. <laughs> okay. Let's start this one all over. Okay. Here we are in attempt number two. And what I've done, like I was saying, is I've logged in as myself in both of these tabs and maybe that'll give it more success. Let's tell it and let's see what it can do from there. All right. Trying to name it. Bachelor three day packages. Here we are. We've we missed the mount, but okay, there we go. Good, good work. Oh, it tried, formatted, but wasn't on the line. 
that it needed to be on. So this is kind of interesting, right? It's trying to move around in a much more complicated environment like Google Docs. And that's not really what this system is yet built for. It's really built for text and links, uh, web pages, tables, things like that. So using these applications may be the challenge, but let's at least see if it can get through all of the different research that it needs to do. That could be interesting. So going to find Bend, Oregon, that's great. Budget Hotel in Bend, Oregon during this time. All right, so I've tried to take over once again, and here we are once again, and the browser is non-responsive. Ah, all right. So how about if I simplify this quite a bit and I give it Google Sheets and a place to search for information and then try to make it much, much easier. Let's give that a shot. Give me a second. Okay, here we go again. I'm going to pause one more time. I'm going to take over. I will give him back to Google in the beginning, and then I will log in to Sheets here. Okay, here we are. We have Google Sheet open, and we'll just take it to Google and then give it back to this guy over here. All right, I will plan a weekend ski trip to Bend, Oregon for this winter, aiming for February 7 to 9, 2026. Research flights, accommodations, transportation, lift tickets, and a dinner recommendation. Then compile all findings into a structured format. All right, perfect. That's exactly what we're looking for. Let's watch and see what he can do. All right, he's choosing some dates that are already wrong, of course. He said 7 to 9, and we're now going 13 to 16, but okay, maybe he's just price shopping, which would be kind of awesome if that's what he was doing. Found several reasonably priced hotels. Okay, tickets. Great. Moving over to sheets to try to make a new sheet. Organize the trip details, including flight, hotel, shuttle, lift tickets, and dinner suggestion. For dear Irene, I guess I now have a wife named Irene. All right, I see this is a big challenge. Can it actually do anything in the Google Sheet? And it looks like it's telling me that the task is complete. So what is it saying? Oh, look, here's the information. Uh, but it doesn't populate it in the Google Sheet. It just drops it out here as Markdown, which isn't, frankly, terrible. It's at least here. Let me ask if it can populate the Google Sheet. <laughs> Paste this into the Google Sheet properly. Copy the entire table. Go to the Sheet. Click on cell A1 and paste. Okay, so it's saying, yes, I can do that with your hands. Okay, let's see. Uh, I don't have a lot of hope here, but it's asking me to do some work, and it did some work for me. I'll do some work for it. Yeah, he was right. Markdown tables do populate into Google Sheets. Excellent. Nice work, Google. Uh, yeah, this worked really well, actually. It failed, of course, but it being able to control Google Sheets would have been a bit of a stretch. All right. All right. Well, this was fun. This is interesting to see what it's doing as it moves around. Let's jump out of here now. All right. So that's Project Mariner. I just wanted to make a quick video because I may or may not be losing the Ultra package for Google soon, and I won't be able to see it again. And I thought it would be a great thing to share with you guys just to show what's back there as you hear about these computer use systems. What is it actually good at? And I will say this one's pretty good. It's got obviously a good Gemini model behind it to try to figure out a plan of what to do. And really, I don't want to be un unimpressed with what it's doing. It's taking screenshots. It's figuring out where to click. It's clicking on the right thing very frequently. It's going and reading the information on the page, compiling that information and making decisions on it. Uh, this is very kind of common stuff in other tools that we see these days, but it's done quite well. It did fail almost every time we used it, to be honest. It's very early days. They're just trying to get some feedback to figure out what works and what doesn't work. Uh, it does feel a little bit strange that this is locked behind Ultra, but I guess they just wanted to keep the price down as much as they could and have as little use as possible, but to gather that information to make it better. That would be my guess. It's really a very good first pass. I did get a coffee maker that was too expensive, and I broke twice and didn't get my trips made for me. And when I simplified my trip, I didn't quite get the data that I wanted. Uh, so why on earth am I saying this is a good product? It is a good product. Um, look, this stuff is going to be the future in some way. Like the idea that you're going to have workflows that you need accomplished, especially in a work environment, that you just know the process and you don't know how to describe it and you need a system to be able to take over and do it. 
at the beginning, at the front of this, it does have a place that says, teach me something so that you can kind of walk through a series of steps. It will record those steps and then you can tell it what that package is and run it again. So that's kind of a way that you might imagine being able to say, oh, I need to release my software. I do that within a browser, but there's five steps. Let me go do those five steps, teach it as something, and then be able to execute that as kind of a package every time. It will have to get a lot better than this, but of course it will like everything else that's out there. I think it was interesting just to see. I hope you learned something from it. Thanks for coming along on this one, and I'll see you in the next one.